Hey guys, Armoring Gun here today with another episode of the Ultimate Gun Room. Basically my mission to put together the coolest little armory that I can. I bring you guys along for what hopefully is a bit of a wild ride to give you guys some tips, tricks, and otherwise inspire your own journey to put together your ultimate man cave, she shed, or gun room armory, you name it. Things like this tool chest, which doesn't have a single tool in it. Well, defined tool, I suppose. But I've got uh, mags, uppers, barrels, opt L cans. L cans coexisting with an ACOG, type A that's just for you. Got a drawer full of radian, a couple G36s in here, just a good time all around. I've got a whole video dedicated to just that thing, so you guys can swipe up there, check that out, or, you know, swipe up here and just see the whole playlist of the Ultimate Gunroom series. Anyways, this safe just arrived from Rhino Metals. I'm super excited about it, so when I went to set it up this past weekend, I came to a very interesting realization, and I was super excited about it, so I wanted to share it with you guys. But first, guys, as a quick itinerary for today, we're gonna cover the follies of my initial attempts to set up that safe and what I learned in the process. That's gonna really help me prepare for a mother load of guns that are on their way. I'll get into a couple little tangents and anecdotes along the way, but overall, I'm gonna discuss the theory and strategy behind how I'm now gonna be looking at these two safes as a single storage solution. And that is the topic at hand. Why two safes? are three times better than one if you optimize. And I didn't go into this thinking that. I went into this thinking, I have a crap ton of guns coming here. A lot of stuff has actually been moving and shaking. Um, May was a huge month for the channel. We had over 8 million views. You guys loved those little shorts that I started putting out. So guys, thank you for watching, sharing, subbing. That is fantastic. Over 8 million views. Picked up 60, 000, over 62,000 subscribers and change in May. So that was fantastic. Super excited. And I also haven't done an Ultimate Gun Room video in a while. So I figured, you know what, let's show the new guys what, uh, what, some, what a big part of this channel is about. Anyways, I digress. Last weekend, I, I finally got into the safe, getting it kind of finished up. I was doing some stuff in the base, just getting it looking real slick. Though the fine workers at Rhino Metals basically did all that for me. But when I went to start filling it with guns and such, I approached it as a blank slate, a clean canvas, just to be filled up with whatever was left kicking around the room. And I quickly realized that, that was that was not really the way to do it. Because this safe, I had originally looked at, you guys have seen this safe in other videos, and if you guys follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, you should, at arm.n.gun, because I post there daily, and especially on my stories, I go through a lot more just kind of, you know, day-to-day -day kind of content. And you get to see this safe and this room in general at its best. And well, best usually in these videos, typically it's worst in things like YouTube stories. Like until recently, this floor was just covered in guns, which may seem like a dream, but it's actually a big hassle. And it's just not conducive to producing content. So at any rate, this thing, this safe, you know, I pretty much had probably stuffed to more than capacity. I think it's rated for something like 70 rifles or something like that, or 70 guns. Of course, you can just... There's a smattering of availability for handguns, so that's pretty much decked out. A few missing a few slots. A couple things are on the wall and other places in the room. But SMGs galore were up here. All my SBRs, including folders and just everything was up here. Actually, fun fact, um, so I share a lot of stuff with Rhino Metals. I, they've posted my stuff on Instagram lots of times, so it's I, I get a, to have a bit of dialogue with them. They're, they're super fun people. They're awesome. Really salt of the earth. The company's founder is actually a vet, so that's that's always good in my books. And their director of marketing is also a vet. He's also young and into social media, and he's a hunter and a weightlifter, and he, and he also digs his Dixon flannels. Big ol' you to the Dixon team. But at one point or another, the boss lady, Jen, she noticed that I had this shelf over here just a little bit, well, it was sagged out. So she's like, he's got too many guns on there, and he shouldn't have that many guns on there. And she's right, because these things are rated for like 40 or 48 pounds. And I definitely had a lot more than that. There was probably like a dozen to 15 guns in there and it was it was to the point where it wasn't even practical anymore so sure i could have reinforced this that's easy enough to do some bars whatever but it just was getting to the point where it wasn't accessible i was also stuffing a whole bunch of stuff in here and then this wasn't accessible because i had to pull all that stuff out before i could rotate out this awesome swing out rack and get into the big baddies in the back this is fantastic storage back here underneath that you get when you use this swing out rack it's just fantastic access for like 13 guns but I wasn't able to access it because, again, I had just, like, hoarded too much stuff in here. 
and his base rear I have full-size kind of battle rifle, 16-inch kind of-ish guns. Again, everything was just cram jammed in there and he wasn't healthy. Guns were bumping each other. Ah, it was not good. But in my mind, I had like maximized the potential of the safe and I was happy with my value out of it. So I was like, great, good, done. Close the door. That one's done. We've got a new one. And then I opened it and I was like, well, what do I have laying around the room? Well, this and that and you know, the guns you kind of see in here. Well, actually it wasn't even this full because a lot of these guns were in there. But now what I realized, okay, light, come on, was that I was approaching this all wrong. I was kind of looking at basically setting this up the same way I set that one up. But that's not the best way to do it. You see, guns come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And with this, this first safe, I had basically reduced my collection down into these, there's four areas here, but then I guess five if you include the area behind the swing out rack and then the door for the handguns. But that's kind of just a given and, and fixed. You can't really do anything else with that unless you pop this off and throw Galatech panels on it, which actually looks really cool and I've debated doing, but I haven't done it yet. At any rate, I looked at my whole collection and I tried to, you know, pick a gun and put it into one of these five buckets, basically. And that's only so efficient. So what I quickly realized was, well, if I have five buckets here, and I have the potential to have five buckets here, they don't need to be the same buckets. No, I can start to optimize my storage between these two safes. And what I mean by that is, instead of my SBRs up here being anywhere from little like five inch guns to like 12 inch with folding stocks to fixed 12 inch guns. I can just put my fixed guns in there from say right now we have eight inches to 12 inches and it's really optimized. I can then, you know, mess around with this shelf to just get it dialed in to just be that because I have enough guns basically to, you know, fill that out. And it's comfortable now because now I have eight guns there, not 15 and Jen's happy, which is good for me because it probably looks pretty bad if the, uh, the boss of the company is making fun of your stuff. Now I can come over here and I have a smaller space dedicated to my folders and guns with uh, PDW Telestocks, which before never fit right in here. They wouldn't stand up tall enough. They kind of like leaned a bit more. These fixed stocks, they can kind of just lean against the wall and they stay. These guys, they always wanted to kind of like wobble over. So I had to have them like on the sides or like, you know, kind of janky propped up against stuff. And that just wasn't optimal but this is much better because now I can have this little ring in here for little barrel slots and everything just, they, they hold up way better. It's just fantastic. And then I realized too, well, I have a crap ton of guns coming in really soon from a host of uh, partners to the channel that are really helping me out, uh, giving me access to a lot of really cool stuff that's otherwise pretty unobtainium. Things like full auto P90s and mag 58s and FN bar Ds and fouls and AKs and maybe a SCAR and uh, maybe an MP7 actually, and a Glock 18. I'm really pushing Richard for a bunch of these things. Basically Richard from Movie Armaments Group, the new crew at Marstar, and my longtime buddies at Wolverine Supplies are, they helped me out with me with some fresh inventory to keep things spicy. Again, you guys like those shorts and those shorts, you know, if I'm pumping out five of those things a week, I'm usually featuring a different gun in every one. So I've got a ticking clock on how many of those things I can do, at least in the current format. I can always mix it up and do shooting ones and whatever else, but I had to keep things flowing. So big thanks to those guys. They're sending a bunch of stuff and it's gonna completely mess up my existing storage solution. So that got me to really start thinking about how I was gonna accommodate basically like upwards of 50 guns that are gonna be showing up here. And again, there's gonna be some small stuff like Uzis and, and things like that, but there's also gonna be some big stuff. Again, the Mag 58 Bren guns, like I got some serious accommodating to do here. And this wall, this wall is gonna be all gallo teched out again very soon. It's gonna look like this wall, except this wall is five feet wide. And that one's gonna be like 12 feet wide. Um, so I'm pretty, pretty excited for that. But things with the machine guns, I definitely want them having their, their home inside the big bad safes. And to do that, I need to optimize more things. And as I pointed out before, trying to fit everything, you know, above a basic handgun, like something like, you know, the Clob and the PC-61 or the VNT USW, trying to fit everything that size and all the way up to a Mag 58 or the MG34, MG42. By the way, I have an MG34 and MG42 tucked back in here behind the swing out rack. Look at that, just chilling. You wouldn't even know they were there. So my plan for the Mag 58 GPMG sized guns 
is actually gonna be to eliminate this shelf right here. We're gonna raise the roof and even dial this one up. My plan for this top little spot is gonna be like micro SMGs like, again, the ones I just showed you, the Clob, the USW, basically the small compact, you know, SMG type things. This is gonna be gone completely because I want room to, again, store stuff like this comfortably. So we'll have those, might have some Brents, we'll have the, you know, the Dragonov will be back here because it'll be super long storage. We'll get the bar back here as well. And then with this shelf gone, I can actually use longer rifles in here. I'll try and balance this so that the guns that I store in this rack max out to around the same height as the GPMGs and whatnot that are around the back. And that makes it really nice to get because you swing this open, reach in, grab a big, heavy, otherwise awkward gun, but you have all the space to do it, nothing in front of it. So that's really nice. So then again, micro SMGs up top or whatever, whatever ends up working. Again, these, this MG34 is actually shorter than I remember it being. So maybe I don't need to really crush this shelf out here. I'll know more about that when it arrives, but the point is to optimize because then I'll come up over here and potentially lower this one here because right now I've got, you know, my, kind of all my 20 inch and, and higher rifles on here, but this space is being arbitrarily set by, by basically a couple guns. This SIG 550 with the 26 inch, 25.6 inch sniper barrel. The next after that is going to be a Valmont Hunter and there's also going to be the Dragunov in the back or the bar when uh, it's chilling in here. Without those things, I can literally drop this thing like another five inches or so, which gives me all room up here, which at that point I can probably, you know, come over and get my PDWs and folders out of there. They'll have enough headroom to be up here now. And then again, if I do a small shelf somewhere for these guys, they can, they can go there. Basically this safe is a given. I have a set amount of internal volume and if it's not being filled by guns, it's not efficient and it's limiting the potential of what this safe has to store. So again, all this empty space, all this empty space. This is looking pretty good. This is really handy. I'm not, this looks clean. It looks efficient. It's very easy to access. That's good. I'm happy with that. Now, of course, this is, this is one of those problems that's, you, you kind of say first world problems, but this is more like, you know, gun tuber or armorer problems, I suppose. But there are people out there with large collections and they could also be, you know, <laughs> If you've got two of these big safes, chances are you've got these problems. And this is a great way to enjoy your collection a lot more. You get better accessibility, you less chance of safe dings. Jen won't call you out and you can show off to your buddies and how smart you are for optimizing and sneaking every little bit of efficiency <clears throat> out of your safe, which is a good thing because these things aren't cheap. These are big investments and you want to use them. You want to use them really well. If you can get another 20 or 30% of your safe, that's, you divide that by the amount of money you spent on the safe, that's pretty significant. Definitely pretty significant. One might be so bold as to argue with their partner that that alone is the financial merit and justification to buying a second safe. I mean, after all, if a second safe gives you 30% better utilization in your first safe, as well as 30% utilization in your second safe, why isn't that like 60% off your next safe? all while maximizing your initial purchase? Sounds like a no-brainer to me. And again, word to the wise for those who are willing to learn from my mistakes, don't, don't try and necessarily just hit that number on its own. Like if this thing is rated for 76 guns, don't just cram 76 guns. I mean, if you've only got that place to cram them and you need to keep them stored and safe, then yes, do it until you can get yourself another safe. Because I didn't think I would look at it this way, but realistically, Having this second safe is no joke, gonna be three times as good as just having this one. I'm sure I'll still be able to store twice as many guns when it all comes down to it because I'm gonna be maximizing internal volume by using it smartly, not just cramming stuff in there and making it really inaccessible and prone to nicks and safe kisses. We want no making out in the safes. Leave room for, <laughs> leave room for Jesus in the safe. No, no kissing, no snogging. Keep your, your oily little arms off of each other and we'll all be happy. By the way, is a neat way of kind of wrapping this up. Yes, increase your number of safes and then use them smartly to maximize their potential respective to one another. But then if you want to double down on it, going back to the beginning of my video with the tool chest, there's a lot of stuff that guys, and I see guys storing in their safes that, I mean, it's valuable, but it's not like it's a super dangerous thing. So like, I like this, I like keeping guns in this, in the safes because 
these are the things that I don't like. like this is the really secure access. People that aren't supposed to get access to these things, they're gonna have a hard time doing it. And they're more set up to organize guns. But you still have stuff like super expensive bipods, optics, range finders, things like that. Like these AccuTax, these are like 400 bucks. By the way, these are my current go-to bipods. And if you use code ARMANGUN on AccuTac, you will save 25%, which is huge. So I wanted to share that with you guys real quick. But things like these that are QD, get them off your guns. Your guns fit better in your safe. You can fit more guns in your safe. You store those expensive things in there. Again, the, uh, the LCAN situation, spare optics, night vision, all kinds of stuff. You know, you can just get that stuff over here. You can even have an EDC thing set up that's ready to go. So you can just crank this thing open, get your stuff for the day, and boom, you're done. That way it's not like taking up a dedicated shelf in your safe. Like right now, this is kind of like an admin shelf. It's kind of right here. But what, what am I going to have here? A little EDC light knife, holster, things like that, a couple mags. And sure, it's at a handy, you know, ergonomic spot, but it's limiting the potential of the, the whole space below, which is the main spot of this safe, is really this section right here and above for something that can easily be replaced and moved somewhere else. That's just as, if not more convenient and way better for that optimization. So consider investing in secondary storage, such as this tool chest. This is a pretty secure one, again, made by the same company that makes those safes. They have these sweet little bar things that, uh, lock in there like that and then you throw a padlock through here. I like these little uh, tactile ones again. That's because I can just come over here and do them in the dark, you know, and it's done. No keys, no combos, it's super simple. You keep, muscle memory is a lot better too. I find it's just hard to forget that kind of stuff. But then boom and you're in. And guys are gonna say like, oh, lock picking lawyer, blah, 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 blah. whatever. Concentric rings of security, like Travis Healy talks about. That also applies to your safe room. And this is, essentially a safe room. It's, it's dialed in secure room on its own. And then each individual thing in here is like an additional ring of security. So this is obviously not to the same extent as these other ones. That's why I talk about keeping things like machine guns or super rare or expensive firearms or stuff that I'm boring for the people that's not mine. Like all these beautiful Glocks from Black Box Customs, just beautiful. But that stuff stays nice and locked up. So it's just an additional layer of security. An additional time delay for would-be criminal to give the cops to uh, arrive and uh, just note I am pretty close to a cop shop so don't get any ideas. And for the tool chest, no you can't just roll it out of here. These things have multiple tether points so you guys can get this locked down or bolted to the wall or tethered down to something or anchored whatever. So you can you can do different things with tool chests too to make them <laughs> maybe not as immobile as, as this 1600 pound safe but still very secure. Also, bonus fun fact, this thing has a biometric lock here and the guys have said like, oh, that's terrible because someone's just gonna cut off your thumb and then get into your safe. Well, that's actually not true. Modern biometric locks don't just read your fingerprint. They read like the subdermal or whatever layer. So if you cut your thumb off, that just dies and like you can't read it anymore. So basically, <laughs> again, don't get any ideas. Don't be cutting off my thumb. I, uh, I like it. Anyways, guys, that concludes this episode of The Ultimate Gun Room. Stay tuned because when the mother load of guns arrives, we will be actually putting to practice, you know, fully what I'm talking about here in optimizing this overall storage solution. It's not just two safes. It is one storage solution. And with that, guys, thanks a ton. I'll catch you on the next one. Armored Gun, out. <laughs>